The Harvard libraries, specifically the Harvard Map Collection, have been involved with GIS services at the university since 1992. At that time, we got a grant from the Association of Research Libraries to implement a GIS program in the Map Collection. We were able to hire a GIS specialist with that grant, and um, at that time, we, we started to support students and faculty in their use of GIS. The only other GIS activity on campus at that time was at the Graduate School of Design and they had a specialist who supported their students so we supported everybody else. We continue to support everybody across campus. Harvard established its Center for Geographic Analysis in 2006 been viewed as a center of excellence, providing services that enhance the use of geographic information, science, and technology, and the teaching and learning with that uh, geographic perspective. And also when the out-of-the-box solutions not sufficient to meet our researchers' needs, we enter into the innovation mode and do our own research, develop new tools and new algorithms to facilitate that need. Back in around 2000, I had gotten involved in a project to do an historical GIS of Chinese history. As an historian, what I was most interested in was the idea that we could not only see change through time, but we could also see variation through space, through time. In other words, with computational methods, with GIS, we were going to be able to see the world change over time, rather than looking at particular political events. And that I found enormously attractive. So, I think one of the, one of the most unique things about Harvard CGA is just how interdisciplinary we are. Um, it probably goes back to our, our, our DNA. Uh, when we were created, uh, unlike many uh, centers, we did not evolve out of a geography department or really any department. Uh, nor did we come out of a, a, out of a library. Most most centers, geospatial centers, are based in one of those two kinds of entities. We were we and we were placed in the Institute for Quantitative Social Science, but even within that, it was always understood that we were uh, we were going to be agnostic in terms of discipline uh, and. And so, so we really have been. Um, we've uh, been been serving all of the all of the schools at Harvard. A large part of what we do is geospatial education for the whole Harvard community. We have several workshops that we teach each semester that are very general in nature, and then we also go into classrooms and teach curriculum specific. Um, geospatial techniques. I conduct archaeological field work in the Kurdistan region of northern Iraq where I am surveying for um, ancient places, archaeological sites. And I'm doing my best to use all of the latest mobile GIS tools that I can. But I don't always have the ability to keep track of them all and to train myself in them. And that's where the support of Harvard Center for Geographic Analysis has been absolutely invaluable. Their staff um, make sure that I know what tools are available and, and how to use them. It helps me train um, my students and my Kurdish collaborators in how these tools and how these tools work. Well, today I think every school recognizes that thinking about the spatial aspect of human experience and of the natural world is really, really important. And in fact, I think now in every school, we have people who care about spatial analysis, who are using uh, the software, the Esri software from ArcGIS that, that we use, who are making use of ArcGIS online. And so today, I think we are immeasurably further 
um, through the classes, through instruction, through workshops. I would say that GIS is becoming part of the skill set of anyone who has an interest in data. The CGA um, and the work that happens here and certainly the people who are here with their own set of qualifications and experience is, is the contribution to the geographical perspectives. The fact that we CG also happens to have staff members who are very good at uh, handling certain kind of softwares or which how to use which methods, when to use what methods, that's part of the story. But it's really influencing and participating in in the framing of the questions. With the data sign and big data work stream at CGA, we are trying to uh, use the latest technologies to solve problems which are difficult to solve using using traditional GIS methods. And what such example is for a project which we did for Harvard School of Public Health, and that project is Project Viva, which aims to study the effect of climate-related environmental exposure on people over time. And uh, this project involved the use of uh, 100,000 rasters, uh, which totaled in about 8 terabytes of data. And the main challenge was to uh, extract the climate variable over uh, for every individual location. Uh, that resulted in about 10 million patient calculations per day. And uh, this kind of uh, 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 problems cannot be solved using traditional GIS tools. So we developed a solution which is called RINGS, Raster Information Extraction System, which did this uh, big raster data extraction and enabled the researchers to study the climate variable at such fine-grained individual level. We're also teaming up with our collaborators in developing proposals building digital twins for our systems and applying these AI tools in, in, in uh, enhancing our models, not only on remote sensing, but also on other uh, geospatial uh, uh, project, research projects. So yes, I think that uh, having a research center or research slash service center like uh, the CGA here enabled us to really connect the research with GIS to research off GIS because the two enhance each other um, closely. I think one of the important things to understand about GIS is that uh, for academics, Unless you are constantly using it every day, you can't really stay abreast of all the utilities and methods that GIS has. And for that, having professional staff here in the Center for Geographic Analysis is absolutely essential. It's critical for GIS services like the CGA to support uh, junior faculty and students because what I found is they are the ones that are most likely to be doing kind of critical and innovative geospatial research. Um, they're also the ones who are least likely to have large research funds to, to pay for it. So it's, it's really critical that the university managed to find a way to support these um, relatively impoverished but really innovative researchers because they're the ones that are really pushing the frontiers has enriched the research across Harvard. But that's again the aspect of research where we have contributed to and I feel we can we should we can also lead, you know, and, and that's where the next phase of and make that more reciprocal, right? Because so it is a very problem oriented field to some extent, um, but there is a lot of new ways we are thinking about it. About that, that issue of space and time and place and so on. So, so you know, in the absence of CGA, I think Harvard would be poorer.